Welcome back to Mason Talks. So the Cleveland Browns 2022-23 season is coming to a close and it has not gone exactly as we all were hoping. The Browns are currently sitting with a 7 and 9 record after beating the Washington Commanders this past weekend and they will be taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers next week. But it's not necessarily a big deal of a game for the Browns because they, of course, have already been eliminated from AFC playoff contention. And it is pretty disappointing because if you look at this season as a whole and the Browns are going to finish either 7-10 and or 8-9, and there were a couple of games early on in the year that had they gone differently, this would be a completely different story. We would be talking about a Deshaun Watson-led Cleveland Browns playoff team at this moment. It's definitely been disappointing, and one of the consistent themes that has followed every single Browns loss this season has been the exact same three or four critiques hurled at head coach Kevin Stefanski, and these are are all drilled into my brain at this point because you see the exact same things after every Browns loss. People say his play calling is bad. He goes for it on fourth down too much. He listens to analytics too much. That's the craziest one is that somehow Paul DePodesta is telepathically communicating into the head of Kevin Stefanski to tell him not to run the ball. Despite the fact that the Browns are one of the most run-heavy teams in the NFL, and he's telling him, Paul DePodesta is telling Kevin Stefanski to throw the football more than they run it. These critiques sometimes borderline on insane, and because of them, over the course of the year, the narrative has been built up that Kevin Stefanski is an average to below average head coach who might even be holding this team back. I've even seen some Cleveland Browns blogs that cover the team who have posted articles listing inexperienced assistant coaches who could potentially replace Kevin Stefanski as the next head coach of the Cleveland Browns, which would thus throw this team back into a cycle of likely decades of coaches getting fired and then hiring different stupid coordinators from across the league. So today, I want to look at Kevin Stefanski's career as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns and come to a rational conclusion on the question of is Kevin Stefanski really a problem for the Cleveland Browns. And I think the best way to do this is to look at his era with this team season by season, see what happened and how his team finished. So first of all, the 2020 season, this was likely one of the, uh, you know, I want to call it the most tumultuous season in Kevin Stefanski's young NFL career because of all the restrictions placed by COVID but we have to talk about the 2021 season in just a minute. But Kevin Stefanski was hired, and then all of the COVID restrictions hit. The Browns were not really allowed to meet in person that much. A lot of the work was done virtually. And despite this, which obviously would be a really you know wacky kind of situation to come in as a rookie head coach, the team was able to finish 11-5, and five. They made the playoffs. They beat the Pittsburgh Steelers with Kevin Stefanski sitting in his basement. Mike Prefer was the head coach of that game. They beat the Steelers in the playoffs and then gave the Kansas City Chiefs, who ended up being AFC champions, a really good fight in the divisional round, nearly beating them, nearly making it to the AFC championship game. Um, But they lost, and Kevin Stefanski was ultimately named the coach of the year. So I I would say that's a pretty good start for an NFL head coach based on those circumstances. Now we look to 2021 and things got a lot more dicey. Second year as Brown's head coach, week one, Baker Mayfield gets injured. Everything went downhill from there. Because if you remember, Baker started out that year in that first game against the Chiefs 
really well. Baker played really, really well. I don't want to say he went blow for blow with Patrick Mahomes, but Baker started that game really good. As soon as he got hurt, things went downhill. And you can argue Kevin Stefanski should have put Baker Mayfield on the bench because of that injury, you know, starting in week two or week three. And that's a legitimate argument. But Baker struggled with injury. The defense started the year slow, much like it did this year with, you know, being led by Joe Woods. Odell Beckham Jr., midway through the season, went through his father's Instagram to force his way off the team and force his way into free agency. And yet, despite all of that drama, despite the fact that you even had Nick Mullins starting a game at one point, the team still went 8-9. and nine. They were one game below a winning record, and they kept their playoff chances alive deep into the season. It wasn't a good year. It, it, it obviously was a losing season. The Baker thing really, uh, you know, threw things off. The Baker injury threw things off early in the year. But with all those, uh, with everything considered with what happened that season, I would say eight and nine was a respectable record for that Kevin Stefanski team to finish with. Now we get to 2022, this current season. First, in, you know, early in the spring, the Browns announced the trade for Deshaun Watson. That obviously was the only thing that anybody talked about all offseason. How long was Deshaun going to be suspended? Uh, suspended. That was something that drug out, you know, late into the summer. Initially, we thought it was going to be six games, and then it ultimately was an 11 game suspension. So expectations obviously dropped. You were thinking, well, you know, hopefully. They can have, you know, five or six wins by the time Deshaun Watson gets onto the field. Jacoby Brissett starts. The Browns got their first week one win since like 2004 or whatever, something crazy like that. Um, And they looked really good early on in the year with Jacoby Brissett. They, they, They were, you know, the offense was rolling. At times he even had a top 10 offense with, you know, Nick Chubb and Amari Cooper. But there were still struggles as you would expect with a second-string quarterback, a a, a guy in Jacoby Brissett who multiple teams before the Cleveland Browns passed on him. I mean, the Colts didn't really want him. The the, the, the Patriots obviously gave him up. They were the first team to have him. Uh, And then the Dolphins weren't able to use him very well either. He played well, but they struggled. They were, were what, four and and, uh, six, four and seven, When Deshaun Watson came back, I mean, it's basically what you would expect with a second string quarterback starting the bulk of the season, but it was still impressive how good Jacoby Brissett looked in the Kevin Stefanski system. And I think it's fair to say Jacoby Brissett has likely revived his career as a potential starter. Like Jacoby Brissett will be competing for a starting job next year, whether it's in Las Vegas, maybe back in Indianapolis. Maybe he goes, you know, somewhere else, wherever Jacoby Brissett's career is revived because of Kevin Stefanski. And, you know, the Browns are going to they're, they're, they're going to finish the season either seven and ten or eight and nine. And I do think that's important. Like, I, I think for team morale and fa- the, the morale of the fan base, beating the Steelers to finish the season and knocking the Steelers out of playoff contention, that will be important but overall looking at this year I think what Kevin Stefanski has done is impressive and I think that if you take these three seasons and everything that happened from the Deshaun trade to Baker's injury last year to the defensive struggles at times if you gave that to any other Browns coach in the last 30 years whether it's you know Freddie Kitchens or Romeo Cornell or Greg Williams or, or or whoever, they would have flopped. They would not have been able to resurrect these teams and keep them at least somewhat afloat like Kevin Stefanski has done. And even if you 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 take that broad look and you narrow it in a little bit and you look at Kevin Stefanski versus some of his peers in the league, I don't know if they would have done as good a job as Kevin Stefanski has done. Like, you look at the Miami Dolphins right now. 
they are really struggling. They went from one of the hottest teams in the league to they're, 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 they're fighting for their playoff chances in the final week of the season. Part of it is because of injuries that have plagued Tua all season long. Ask yourself legitimately, would Kevin Stefanski do a better job with Teddy Bridgewater and whoever else they're throwing out, their third string quarterback was, would he be able to do a better job than Mike McDaniel? And I think there's a legitimate argument to say Kevin Stefanski, with what we've seen, probably is better with second string quarterbacks than Mike McDaniel. Same thing with with the Jets and everything that's gone on their season. Kevin Stefanski likely would have been able to do better with a guy like Joe Flacco or Mike White. And that's not to discredit Robert Salah or anything because they obviously, you know, they the, the, the Jets missed the playoffs, but, you know, he did a fine job coaching. I'm just saying that in terms of what Kevin Stefanski is able to do with messy offensive units at times, it's pretty impressive. And it does make you wonder, and this is the whole point. This was the whole point we were talking about all summer. What will Kevin Stefanski be able to do with a full season with an elite quarterback like Deshaun Watson? And, you know, that 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 was the entire conversation all summer long was, you know, hopefully they can compete for the playoffs, but all that matters is getting Deshaun Watson some reps and having him ready for 2023. So why would anybody consider taking that opportunity away from Kevin Stefanski? Assuming Deshaun Watson takes a leap next year, this team is going to be a legitimate playoff contender, and it's going to be because of Kevin Stefanski. And just one other note, one other thing that I hope the Browns are learning, and I think they are learning, and I think that everybody needs to learn to appreciate You look at teams in this division, the AFC North, one thing that has defined the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens is their consistency in coaching. The Steelers have had, like what, five coaches since 1960? Mike Tomlin's been there forever. Bill Cower was, you know, he was was there forever before Tomlin. Chuck Knoll was there forever before Cower. There is something to having consistency with your head coach and not just firing him because you think his fourth down play calling is a little odd. Same thing with the Ravens. Like, I know that Harbaugh and Greg Roman get criticized at times for their play calling and their handling uh, uh, of of the run game. Like, why was Tyler Huntley throwing it so many times against the Browns, uh, you know, the couple Saturdays ago? We'll never know. But still... John Harbaugh's a really solid head coach, and part of it is because he's been given multiple chances. He had a 4-12 and season on his resume with the Ravens. They stuck with it, and they have been a perennial playoff team for decades. I think it's time that the Browns give consistency a shot. Kevin Stefanski is a good head coach. I think there's an argument to be made that he can be a great head coach. But part of that is not freaking out when things go wrong. And I'll give a little bit of credit to Jimmy Haslam. I think that he is finally going to have the confidence and trust in his head coach to not freak out after back-to-back losing seasons. And I think the members of this fan base and the media need to have a little bit of that trust and patience as well. But if you disagree, let me know in the comments. Do you think the Cleveland Browns should consider firing Kevin Stefanski this offseason? Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.